My name is Anders Fanlöv. I'm the CEO of um, uh, Ecorub. I was uh, I started in this position in mid-November. I was previously the chairman of the board of Ecorub. And what we do will follow. No. So, a short bit of the company. We were. Um, uh, we are a green tech company. We were uh, founded in '95. We were listed in 2010 on the stock market uh, in, in Spot Spotlight. Um, we have a market cap of 56 million shareholders, a lot of them, if somebody is looking at this now. Um, major turnaround and refocus is ongoing. I'm going to go through that and we're going to move into how we become a true material company. Um, we, have, we are increasing our sales because we have been dipping and now we're moving back up again. We have a factory up north in Skellefteå. We have customers mainly today in, in the Nordics, but we are expanding in selected countries in Europe. As you all know, it takes a lot of sales effort, money, and, and uh, uh, to, to go into new countries. And our mission here is to establish us as the number one choice of quality material, recycled quality material. Some, some things here about what we do. Um, uh, we have been doing a lot of, of other products. We're still doing that, the molded products, the floor mats, etc. But we are moving into the focus is on the materials. Um, and we are doing different kinds of materials, we are, but they're all plastic. But they're all plastic with some have 100% plastics and some have a lot of rubber in them. And we're coming back to that. So the opportunity here is, is, is huge. Everybody before me has expelled how much plastic is growing, the rubber industry is also growing. And there are so many hundreds of thousands of tons that go into incineration every year. We are focusing a lot on the opportunity to recycle rubber, and specifically industrial rubber. And the thing with the industrial rubber is that it's very, very, very little of that is reused and recycled and go into new products. And that is due to the volcanization, which makes it very, very difficult. So, so the producers of the rubber, they want to improve circularity and minimize their carbon footprints. And they're willing to pay for it. And we're not going to capitalize on that. We're moving into business uh, B2B customers. Everybody wants to improve circularity and reduce uh, carbon footprint. Uh, but the thing is here, where, where are the materials? There are very few selections that you can have if you want to have an, uh, a recycled advanced material. So this is just a schematic picture of, of what we actually do. It's that. Uh, if you have a virgin uh, rubber material producer, he produces, they produce it waste. Five to 10% of the production goes to waste from them. And they don't have a, a real solution on how to recycle it into new products. The application producers of rubber, they don't have it either. They produce a mass, some of them produce a massive amount of, 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 of waste in the production. Maybe you can't can see this, but you have also a, selected recycled plastic materials, because that is one of the key things here. You need to be in control to be able to do advanced materials. You need to be able to control your chains and the inflow. And then we also mix it with some virgin plastic materials. So in this, kind, in this combination, we can produce recycled materials equal to virgins. And that is the uniqueness with us. So the finances on this is that producers, perhaps 10%, application producers, 5 to 10%, we actually get paid to take their, um, to receive um, the waste rubber. 
and then we can add some magic and plastics, and then we can produce here uh, material at, the, at this kind of prices. And this is, is a tempting thing. We can do this one in one production line now, but we can do it in several if we open up more, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the key here is for for being successful is that you need to have equal specifications so you can compete with the virgin materials. If you can't compete, you ain't going to be selected. Everybody knows how hard it is to change the product, change something, in, ingredients, something in there. But if you are on, e on par, but you have partly recycled, you reduce the CO2, you, you, you have recycling built in. And this is the uniqueness with us. We can meet that, and we have it verified. And also that you can have the waste material control. We are very selective on which ones we address and why. We know beforehand what we're going to do with the materials before we sign contracts on, on the recycled rubber or recycled plastics. That means, but also, that means that you need to make all the meet all the criteria for recycling. And they are pretty hard. You need to have all the safety data sheets. That means that you need to meet, you need to know exactly what's in your recycled material. And if you have many, many distribution channels, yeah, it's a challenge. And you need to have this end of waste and everything in control, so you know. So this is the uniqueness with us. And to be able to do that, you need to have world-class competence when it comes to how to, to make the materials and produce them. And we have that. We have this zero, zero friction strategy when it comes to me how we meet the customer. That means that you should be able to do what you're doing today. You don't need to change anything. So, and that means that you can produce it in the same way you do. When you go to sourcing, you have the same prices, you have the same price list, you can compare with what you are buying today. But we don't believe, today there is no, we need to be more established before we can have a premium pricing. So that's why we go in head on head on everything. And the qualities and the tolerances and the processes, everything should be the same, the zero friction. And, and if, if we would come, the bio-based materials, for example, many of our competitors there from the, from the large companies, they, you had here, here, 30 to 55 kilograms. But then many of them add, the, the bio-based materials are 20 to, 25, 30, 35 uh, um, sec more per kilo. And that's a very hard sell for anybody. Eleven minutes. So where we are with the materials right now is that we have materials ready for the market. We introduce them on the market now this year. Uh, and we are expanding, uh, expand sales into some selected countries. We, we start, of course, in the Nordics, but we are addressing also some selective countries with our sales partner, Suffolk Alcan, which has a, a, a global distribution, but they're very strong in particularly some countries in Europe. So, so we need to establish ourselves. Then we need to grow and secure that we have the industrial scale needed and um, that we have the industrial scale uh, waste material flows. So we, and then we can extend and, and add more materials add, and more, therefore we can address more markets and more customers. And in a few years, then we have established ourselves in a few countries then we will also expand and have 
more sites. And if this can go faster, I, I would be very, very pleased. But you know, it's, it takes time to establish. So then we can, the thing is here is that there are not a lot of companies doing this. And when it comes to the, oh, okay, uh, a lot of time left. But when it, when it comes to the, um, the virgin materials producers that we compete with today, this is a totally different chain. They have the whole factories, the whole production, the whole sales built up on something. And if you take in another flow of recycled material and mix it, it's, it ruins the complete chain of everything they do. So they will say that they're doing it, they will, will do it in a, in a very limited scale, but they are not, there are more paper competitors like greenwashing than true competitors. So the journey is just beginning. I'm standing, I feel I'm standing in the middle of the way of the presentation. <laughs> um, so we have all the data that we need. We have, uh, we have secured material flows already today, and we are ready to scale up now. We are selling something that reduces the CO2 with 30 to 94%, depending on which materials for which application, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and we, are, we have 30 to 100% recycled materials that we are using. Um, yeah, and there is a used market, and, and I haven't ain't going to present how, how, how big the market is for plastics, but it's, it's huge. So there's no end of life there. So the, so the thing is, it's, it's about time and, and that you have perseverance to actually move on, more customers, move on, move on, move on, to just continue what we are, what we have started. And it's all about execution. So we need to deliver. Um, so the business is there. We need to take it. Oh, it's going to be. Well, thank you, Anders. Uh, <coughs> very intriguing. And um, um, I'd just like to ask you, you mentioned uh, competitors, um, but uh, you also mentioned that they weren't exactly competitive because if I understood it correctly, um, they were less, less flexible in their systems uh, in comparison to yourselves. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it, they are competitors. The, the, the true competitors to us is the virgin materials. Mm -hmm. They are focusing on the virgin materials because if you do a product, let's say that you're in the, uh, for example, the soft plastics that we have presented here, you, everything that you believe is in, in the car that's a rubber, it's plastic. It's a soft plastic. And in your house and, and wherever you go on buses and everything, the soft plastics are there but you believe it's rubber, <laughs> kind of. Um, so the competitor, the competition here is that to make the customer to actually choose a recycled material because of the, everybody has to believe that it doesn't meet the criteria of, of, of an advanced and, and the quality material, but ours do. Mm. So uh, I I in a way here, you, you are fairly unique. We are fairly unique here. In the yes. world. Yes. We are. Uh, so I, I think that one of the key words here. Yeah. And um, when you're going, you, you were talking about scaling up and uh, starting to execute. Uh, so how and where geographically uh, do you would you like to market yourself, and how do you market yourself? We would. We market is one of the things that we need to scale up and upgrade as well, including sales. But we want to specifically we want we want to address northern Europe mm -hmm. right now. Um, where you have, um, for example, the, the, the car industry and, and, and or everybody connected to that. Uh, the problematic thing with the car industry is it's slow. Everybody oh, says it's fast, okay. but it is. No, exactly. And, and, it is and, extremely uh, slow. But once you're in there, mm. then you're in there. Th that's an interesting thing because, because one would have thought that the, the car industry with the EV development and so on were. were pretty switched on, yeah. um, but then you, you would argue against that. Um, but 
on the other hand, as you mentioned, when you're in, you're in, so the volumes will be huge. Yes, so, uh, so I mean, example, there are so many things that you can reuse our material for. If you go to, uh, 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 I think, uh, Korauta and similar stores here yeah. in Sweden, and you see all the handles on, on everything, all the everything is, is a soft plastic. That is, is put there. Most, many of them are made in China, which make it difficult. But if they're produced here, somewhere around here, so, so, wherever, we have one so. G-Man is one of our customers. They make everything from, from our material. Um, so it's. But if you, if you ground the elephant, then, then you need to be prepared, one could. Yes. One could argue. Yes. Yes. Um, next month, uh, any holders of the warrants can convert those to shares, and, and uh, uh, you, you, you said you were ready to scale up. So, how, how would you like to address the market and, and any holder of the, the warrants? I think we are. The key here is that we are really changing our strategy into moving into something with a higher margin mm -hmm. on everything that we do, and it's, it's easier to scale it up than what we have been previously been doing. So it's. So, so we're moving the company in that direction. So please, shareholders, be, sh be faithful <laughs> on, on, on that we have uh, really entered that journey now. So, so uh, anyone with a convertible um, or the warrants, I should yeah, say, I should, should is, uh, continue to be a yeah, shareholder because it, there's more to come. Exactly. And then I would say that it might be one of the best choices you actually do in it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Right now. And if we look at the timeline here then, um, uh, coming next 12 months, what, what should we expect in the market? What, what should we look for? You should look for the number of new customers mm -hmm. that we are have. Because once you have a customer, and, and, a number, and you should also look who is the customer, mm -hmm. what is the potential in that customer when you, once you're in there. And we have so many tests ongoing uh, right now. That, but you know, the first thing is you need to get in there, and then mm -hmm. you win. And, but it is definitely there, and we have all these amazing projects ongoing. And, and from experience here, uh, if, you, if you are, a, let's say, a, a slightly um, well, not as big as a car producer. If you're, yeah. if you're a company with that size and they would sign up with you, then uh, you, you're not really allowed to address that uh, without their, their approval. So, so I, I would have thought that even if you get a good contract for us in the market, we should be patient because if, if the Fords of the world, um, they, may not, they may say that you have to hang on a little bit before you announce that. Yes, yeah. they do, and we have several, several like that. Actually, okay, interesting. So yeah. that could be one thing to to bear in mind that this year uh, is a, is a year of, as you said, well, execution and um, uh, trying hard to get new contracts. And if we don't see anything tomorrow, then uh, that doesn't mean it, it's it's not there. <laughs> Oh, but be patient <laughs> tomorrow as well, actually. <laughs> well, Anders, uh, yeah. I think we should uh, thank you with a bigger floor. Thank you.